Okay, good morning class. Okay, we have come again to continue with our lesson. Okay, the topic of the lesson number five has been uh, managing resources. Okay, and uh, we have seen what to do to preserve our environment, to preserve our body, to preserve the local communities. But before everything, first of all, put in mind that right now, the disease that is called coronavirus disease 19 is a pandemic disease that is uh, making much harm in the world. And the government has given you some instructions some measures to respect, to obey, okay? Another measure is to wash hands regularly with soap and water, okay? Okay? All right. Or to use an alcohol-based gel, okay? To preserve from this disease, okay? Whenever you want to cough, or blow your nose or sneeze itchy. okay bend your elbow and do it in this part of your body okay if you don't have anything to do please stay at home okay avoid gathering avoid crowds avoid okay manifestations and demonstrations okay okay uh, we continue. Okay? So, managing resources. The second part of our lesson is uh, write, write. Okay? In the first part, it was about uh, reading. And the second part is uh, write. And I give you a topic. The topic is at the end of the lesson about sustainable agriculture. Your teacher asks you to write a paragraph on this subject, okay? To write a paragraph on sustainable agriculture. The following ideas can help you, okay? Define both. Both means the two, okay? Define sustainable agriculture and conventional agriculture. Then, the drawbacks. The drawbacks are the negative aspect of uh, conventional agriculture. In another part, is it possible to make agricultural activities, agricultural activities in Africa more productive and less harmful, less dangerous for the environment, for animals, and for human beings, and how is it possible? Is it possible? Okay, and how is it possible? Because remind that the success of this country is based on agriculture. So is it possible to make agricultural activity in Africa more productive and less harmful for the environment, is it possible? Okay. To tackle this subject, don't forget that any paragraph, any job, any writing paragraph needs three parts. An introductory part, a development, or if you want the body, and uh, a conclusion. Any literary activity needs uh, three parts. Introduction, development, and conclusion. I say here that the following ideas can help you. You are not obliged to follow this uh, order. You can reshuffle, you can reorganize. You can start with this part, after that, this part, after that. 
this bar, etc. It depends on you. It's up to you. You understand? Okay? So, to start, you can define first agriculture. After that, define conventional agriculture. That is the old manner, the old way of doing or making agriculture. And after that, you come to sustainable agriculture. That is the new way, the new form, the new type of agriculture. Remind that this agriculture is intensive. You practice it on a small place, on a small area, and the production is high. Okay? But here, conventional, you cut the trees, you burn the place, but you destroy the environment. So, be careful. Okay? All right. Now, the drawbacks of conventional agriculture. And you answer these questions. Don't forget that, okay? You announce your plan in this part. Here, you give your argument in the second part. You give your argument. You give some examples, some evidences. You give some details. Some explanations eventually. And in the last part, that is the conclusion, don't forget, you summarize. Summarize means you make a, um, a precise, you, you are precise, you are concise, okay, with the ideas developed here, okay. You take one idea, you put it here. But here you don't explain. You don't explain. In this part, when you give the argument, you develop. You give details. You give examples. But here you don't give examples. You give the point. After that, the second point. After that, the, the third point, etc. etc. When you finish, you give your own your own points. It means your own, your personal idea about this subject. Do you prefer conventional agriculture or do you prefer sustainable agriculture? Okay? Don't forget, in the conclusion, don't forget to give your own point. Correct? You do it at home, you do it at home, and the next time we are going to correct it. Thank you for listening. Thank you, dear student. Stay at home if you don't have anything to do. Respect the instructions given by the government and see you very soon. Thank you. Okay, dear student, we come again for our lesson Managi Resources, okay? Because we have to preserve our resources, natural resources and mineral resources to avoid Pollution. To avoid pollution. Okay? Because the ozone layer protects uh, human beings. If you destroy the ozone layer with pollution, it is very dangerous. It is very harmful for our society. Okay? Okay, today we are going to speak uh, of uh, something. Okay. Let me give you these uh, this service. If if she comes early, we will go out. Dear student, tell me, this sentence, is it the expression of a regret or is it the expression of a condition? Yes, Kogodon? It is? Uh, yes, okay? It is the expression of a condition, okay? It is the expression of condition. 
Okay, now I I touch up. Okay, the expression of condition uses uh, four forms uh, of conditionals. So we have uh, four conditionals. We have the zero conditional, the first conditional, the second conditional, and the third conditional. So to express the condition, we use conditionals. And the conditionals are of four forms. The zero conditional, the first conditional, the second conditional, and the third conditional. But you are in terminal, so we are not going to deal with zero conditions because it is too simple. Okay? Today we are going to see the first conditional, the second conditional, and the third conditional. Okay. As you can see on the board, language function expressing conditions. Okay? Alright. The structure is the first conditional, the second conditional, and the third condition. We use, dear student, follow, hey, shut up. We use the first conditional for possible things or likely to happen. Okay? Things that are possible to happen or likely to happen. And the structure is if plus present simple plus will or won't plus verb. If plus present simple plus will or won't plus verb. Now you can see if plus present simple plus will or won't plus verb. I give you an example. If the farmers have enough food. If the farmers have enough food, they won't bother, bother, bother means disturb, okay? Disturb the government, okay? All right. If the farmers have enough food, they won't bother the government. If, plus present symbol, plus will or won't, okay? Won't is the negative form of will, okay? Plus verb. Correct? Correct? Can we continue? Yes. Okay. The second conditional. The second conditional is used for activities that are imaginary or unlikely to happen. Imaginary or unlikely or impossible. Impossible. To happen. The structure is if plus past simple, past simple is pretend. Okay? If plus past simple plus would or wouldn't plus verb. Okay? Okay, dear student, follow. If plus present, okay, the first condition, if plus present simple will. If plus past, will becomes would. You understand? You understand? Present, past, present, past, or future, past. Okay? Will, okay. if plus. Example, if they use fertilizers, fertilizers, okay? Remind that fertilizer is a substance you put in the soil to make your production grow, okay? A substance, okay? If they use the fertilizers, the peasants, Peasants are farmers, okay? The peasants 
would increase their crop yields, their crop production, products. Okay? If it was pasta or pretty, wood plus verb. And we have the third conditional. The third conditional is used for the actions that, for imaginary actions that did not happen in the past. The structure is if plus past simple, past perfect, excuse me, if plus past perfect plus would or wouldn't have, would have or wouldn't have plus past participle. Okay? If the past perfect is had plus past participle. This is what we call past perfect. Okay? Alright. Example. If government, if government had increased, no, had invested, if government had invested, had plus past participle, had invested in agriculture, they would have, they would have ensured past participle, food security. Okay? If government had invested in agriculture, they would have ensured food security. Correct? Okay. Any question? No question? Is it clear? Okay. Application exercise. Dear student, this exercise is in two parts, okay? First, you complete, and then in B, you decide. Complete the following sentences with the correct verb forms. Example, number one is boy. If you yeah, boil water, you will kill most of the germ if you boil. Aha. Uh -huh. If you boil water, you will kill most of the germs. Will plus verb. Boy. Okay. You look at the structure. One, two, and three, and you complete. Second example, second sentence. If he not use pesticide, insects would have eaten all his crops. I look at rapidly. Would would have ah. Second sentence, would have eaten. So, would have eaten. Would have eaten. So here it is, past perfect. If he, uh huh, you would, mm, 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 uh huh, somebody, uh huh, yes. If he hadn't used, if he hadn't. Used, not used. Add, add plus plus particle, negative. Added, used the pesticide, insect would have eaten all his crops. So here it is, uh, hadn't uh, used. Hadn't uh, used. Okay. It is, uh, hadn't uh, used. So the three. How would you make a living if you not have a farm? How would you? When I look at the structures, number one, number two, number three, um, would make, would make, ah, would make, okay? So, how would you make a living if you, if you didn't have, didn't have, the farm. Okay? Preterit of have, negative, didn't have. Number four. He sell his land if they offer him a price. If plus presenter, if plus presenter, 
A e will set. You will set. Okay? And number five, if I were you, I grow some crops for food. If I were you, I grow some crops for food. Ah, if plus preterit, if plus preterit, would, okay. I would grow. I would grow. Okay? Okay, dear students, okay? Listen carefully. This sentence, sentence number five, it is uh, the second conditional, but here uh, it is uh, an imaginary situation. It is uh, a guessing. If I were you, normally we say if I was, but here we say if I were, okay? Because uh, it is a supposition. It is a supposition. It is uh, an imaginary situation. If I were you, you understand? Okay. Now, second exercise is that A and B decide the type of conditional that is used in each sentence. Sentence number one. What conditional? Conditional? Uh huh. Yes, first condition. Number two. Number two. Uh huh. Third conditional. Yes. Number three. Number three, second condition. Second condition. Number four. Number four, first condition. Number five. Number five, yes, second condition. Thank you. One cheer for you. One cheer for you. One cheer. One cheer. Two cheers. Two cheers. Thank you. Okay. Okay, dear students, now we continue and then we are going to finish, okay? Okay? Okay. Uh, look at uh, rapidly this sentence and choose between which or who, okay? The trees which are in the Thai forest are useful or the trees that uh, who are in the Thai forest are useful. Useful means important. Okay? The trees. Uh -huh. Okay? Yes, correct. The trees which, because which is used for objects, and who is used for people, for persons. Okay? All right. Which and who, what are they? What are they for you? What are they? Ah, okay? In this sentence, they are relative pronouns. They are relative pronouns. Okay. Now, relative pronouns. Let's go to these two sentences. Okay. In this exercise, we are going to see the relative pronouns, but in reduced forms. Okay. Okay. So, how to use the reduced relative clauses. Relative sentences, okay? All right. Now let's start in the two sentences. The basilica, the basilica, our lady of peace, is a huge, huge means very big, is a huge church which is situated in Yamsu. The basilica, our lady of peace, is a huge church which is situated in Yamsu. Okay? As you can see, we have which is situated, which is situated. And in the second sentence, you see that the Basilica, Our Lady of Peace, is a huge church situated in Yamsoku. Okay? Situated in Yamsoku. Then you notice that the second sentence uses a situated. It has omitted which is. So 
we can use the reduced relative clauses by omitting this part of the sentence. Okay? Instead of saying who is, that is, which is, you can say situated. You shorten, you shorten this part. Okay? So the Basilica, our lady of peace, is a church situated in Yamso. You can say which is situated, but you can also say situated. Same okay? You understand? You understand? Yes. Okay. If you understand, then we come to this sentence. Now rewrite these relative clauses as reduced relative clauses. Okay? The first sentence is the boy who was killed by an explosion was called Miguel. The boy who was killed by an explosion was called Miguel. Uh huh. Rapidly. Come on. The boy. Uh huh. The boy killed. You omit who was. The boy killed by an explosion was called Miguel. Okay, so this is the reduced relative close of this sentence. Correct? Okay. The young boys, second sentence, the young boys who are wearing hats are budding artists. Budding artists are new artists. Okay, new artists. There are a lot of um, well known artists. Okay, okay, okay. Who are wearing hats are body artists. So, uh huh, rapidly. The young boys who are wearing hats are body artists. Uh huh. Yes. The boys, the young boys, wore. Uh huh, somebody to help? Ah, okay. The young boys who are wearing hats. The young boys. Wearing, you omit who are wearing. Okay. Number three. Many children who work in mines do not live longer. Who work in mines? Mines. Okay. Mines. Uh huh. Many children who work in mines. Uh huh. Yes. Many children are working in mines. Do not leave long. Number four, government which invests in renewable energy sources care for the environment. Take care for the environment. Okay, are preoccupied. Okay, by the environment. So, government investing. Correct. Investing. Okay, government investing in renewable energy. Number five, the factory which is being built on the coast will employ over 200 people. 200 people. Over. Okay? Okay? This one is other. Don't pronounce other. Okay? It's other. Over. The factory which is being built on the coast will employ over. Uh huh. The factory. Built. On the coast, we employ over 200 people. Okay? Thank you, student, uh, dear student, for listening. Uh, we shall meet next time for Unit 6. Thank you for today. Bye bye. See you next time. Take care.